Commodore 64 and 1 to 8 file format guide. First mistake you can make, don't ask for ROMs. On other systems such as the NES, NES, Master System and Mega Drive etc, they only have cartridges. Those cartridges only contain ROMs, and hence they are ROM dumps. This is not the case on the 64 as it is a computer and ROMs have another meaning. If you make this mistake, you will get one of two answers. One, we don't call them ROMs, this is not a game machine, get a clue loser. Two, you'll be pointed to the kernel, basic and charge end ROM needed to make an emulator work. 99.999999% this is not what you want. Traditionally, there are three main formats for loading software from. Dataset, disk and cartridge. There's also now a fourth emulator specific file format, I'll get into those, but when dealing with file formats, it's important you specify the exact format you want. Each format has its own modes, tricks, potential breakpoints, and we will need to know exactly which you are having trouble with. Also, different formats can have different versions. For example, Activision's Hero comes on tape, disc and cartridge. However, each version is identical so it doesn't matter, unless you want to relive the exact method you had. Accolades, Lore of the West, comes on tape and disc. The tape version, however, does cycle through the NPCs, but keeps the same backdrop, only loading when you complete one of the NPC interactions, while the disc version will load the backdrop that matches each NPC as it cycles. Sometimes the disc and tape versions are different games made by different people. Sometimes the games don't exist on other formats. Mr. Sid's Prince of Persia port needs an easy flash cart. There is no other version. We might be looking for special quality versions that convert the game to either D81 or easy flash cart to make life easier. So the format and the exact file format matter. The data set. We only have tap files. They are a logical representation in that they don't care how the tape stored things, they store the bits as the computer would perceive them. You can also convert them to WAV or MP3 and load them from a media player of your choice such as an iPod or phone with a special adapter for the hardware. Disk drives. This is where it gets complicated, very complicated. The most common format is the D64. It is a logical 1541 model disk, and for most things, it works. But again, it stores the bytes how the Commodore understands the data, not how the drive understands it. So when emulating a D64, some of the drive's logic is simplified, if not just sidestepped completely. However, as the drive is a mini computer with its own CPU and RAM, it can be programmed to store, load the disk however you want. Some games do this for protection, or for more storage, etc. For this, we need to emulate the disk at the disk level, rather than the logical bytes, in the standard DOS layout. A GCR encoded image of every bit of the disk is used. These are G64 images. D71, this is for the 1571 drive, which is double-sided for larger storage capacity. But unless you're dealing with obscure C128 stuff, you won't see one, and even then. The D81 is for the 1581 3.5 inch disk drive. No commercial software shipped on the 81. Okay, Metal Dust did. But you'll, need, you'll see this for compilations and 81 versions of games. The 880K allows 5.5 1541 discs to fit on one disc, allowing most games to be one disc, avoiding disc flipping. Very handy on emulation devices where flipping discs is a pain. D82. This is the PET's 8250 dual disc drive. This won't connect to a C64 normally and needs a special adapter. However, thanks to the magic of emulation, it works like any other drive. You can get one megabyte per disc. These are mostly only used 
in the special C64 mini compilation disc images that have been made. Cartridges, CRT. This is a catch-all format that contains a header, similar to the INS header if you've dipped into NES emulation. It contains the size, layout, and additional logic the card has. Basically, you attach it, and it works. In files are just raw data from the card's ROMs, and will pretty much always be 8 or 16K. You can easily tell which one they're supposed to be based upon the file size. Although, if you're unsure how that works, it's best just to find a CRT version. Emulator-only formats. PRGs. When you save a file to a disk or a tape, it is saved in what is known as the PRG format. If a file is a one load, then you can just have the PRG. You don't need the image file around it. It's just a waste of space. But if you want, you can insert it into a D64 or a tap image. Or just load it directly. The benefit of this is because it doesn't have any known format, the emulator can just directly inject it into RAM instantly for instant load. P00 files. This is a custom file for an out of date emulator. Basically it's just a PRG but it also stores the original file name. If you see one, it's probably best to ignore it and just find another version. Likewise, T64 is a tape-like format made for an old emulator. Again, obsolete. It's best to find another version if you can. Other gotchas. The number one cause of issues I've seen is lack of true drive emulation, which the C64 and Mini have renamed to Accurate Disk. For further confusion. The 1541 and the other 15XX drives are mini computers that either have a 1 or 2 MHz 6502, 2 or 8K of RAM, and 16K of ROM. This means when you connect one to the Commodore, it's actually a network between two or more computers. The programmer can tell the drive to do something other than the standard. This is common on the 64, and is how turbo loaders and copy protection works. Some titles, mostly cracks, strip this requirement and use stock loading. Some cracks add other loaders to single side a game. When you don't use TDE slash AD, then the drive's loading uses a lot less CPU power on the host. Important for the C64 and other Pi based emulation use cases. And can easily speed up the loading. However, it can break a lot of things. The SD2IEC doesn't emulate the drive, so most things that are SD2IEC compatible won't need the TDE or AD enabled. If you have a G64, not a D64, then you will need TDE or AD enabled. Apart from that, there is no real way to tell up front. You have to try loading it. And if it fails, just doesn't load, crashes, black screens, etc. Enable TDE, AD and try again. Also, loading was slow, so if something doesn't happen in 20 seconds, that may be normal. Wait longer first. 